live in New York. I'm Brett Musburger with Irv Cross. The Green Bay Packers have just gone in again, kicked the extra point. They now lead the Cleveland Browns by a score of 14-13. How about Dallas and Philadelphia? Let's show you what has happened, and that's the key match of the day. They start off at 5-1, and one, and oh, how close it has been. Ron Jaworski pressured here by Randy White. He'll cough the ball up, and Hegman, number 58, pounces on it, and the Cowboys lead it by 7. Now watch Jaworski go to Wilbert Montgomery's replacement, Billy Campfield. Irv, first, how is Montgomery, and what about Campfield is a replacement. Montgomery has a strained knee, won't see action the rest of the day, but Campfield's excellent. Good speed and size, 205 pounds, probably the fastest guy on the squad. Watch Jaworski buy time here, and big Harold Carmack will work free, and this is the Eagles' lone touchdown. They're now deep into the third period. They are tied at 10, the Cowboys and the Eagles. There it is. The Packers lead Cleveland 14-13. They played a marvelous game. They turned in a tremendous goal line stand at the end of the half. Washington all over St. Louis, and the Bears know why this is happening, particularly their fans. Do you remember when Chicago jumped all over St. Louis the last Sunday of the season? It cost Washington a chance to go to the playoffs. Today it's get even time. 23-0 Redskins all the way. Cincinnati now leading Minnesota by two touchdowns. This is a big one as far as the Bears and the Lions are concerned. They need the Vikes to lose. The Jets lead Seattle 14-10, but the Seahawks have blocked a punt, and Sam McCullough. Took it in for a touchdown. It was a 53-yard punt recovery, and Todd has thrown two touchdown passes. Miami over Buffalo, 17-7. Joe Cribbs has scored again, the rookie sensation of the Bills from two yards out. There is the game that you're watching. 10-0, the Bears over the Lions at the half. New England and Baltimore in a key showdown. The Colts lead at 14-10 at the half. Yes, Burt Jones has a touchdown pass. Four yards to McCauley. Grogan, 37-yard to Harold Jackson. New Orleans now leading Atlanta, 14-13. Manning, two touchdown passes, 18 to Chandler and 15 to Galbraith for the Saints' points. Kansas City trailing Denver by a point, 14-13. Craig Morton has thrown two touchdown passes in that game, 14 and six yards. Let's show you some of that action from the Green Bay-Cleveland game. And it now appears that the Packers were a vastly underrated football team as the season began. They needed some healthy players, as Jimmy the Greek would say. Now watch Dave Logan concentrate for the Browns. Duel with the loose ball. And the defensive back of the Packers comes up at the last moment. He got a hand on it and knocked it away. But Brian Seif came right on back for the Browns. And he'll go to number 33, Reggie Rucker, working right here in the middle of the field. And it is down to the Packer goal line. Mike Pruitt banged in for the Browns' touchdown. And the Packers were able to come back. What about Lynn Dickey of the Packer? You know, of course, he made a late, late in the um, second quarter, rolled outside, ran up the... <laughs> In the middle for a touchdown for the Packers. You know, he's a good runner, handles offense very well, but you know, their biggest problem still is a kicking game. But Bernie seems to be uh, doing well there for him. Exactly. How about Minnesota and Cincinnati? Do we have anything on that action? Kenny Anderson and Isaac Curtis are hooking up. They're back together. The Vikes have been unable to get on track, and here it is, Irv. Anderson to Curtis for 40. Anytime you want to go deep in Cincinnati, you go to this guy. Isaac Curtis has great range. And from there, Pete Johnson banged across from two yards out. Now, let's show you some of the action from St. Louis and Washington. And here he is, Joe Theismann to Don Warren for 31. The Theismann's a spotty kind of passer. You know, when he gets hot, he really goes on the streets. The first half, he had 199 yards passing today. What a day Clarence Harmon is having, Irv. Pretty good bet. That's his first touchdown. Now they go to Ricky Thompson. Nothing wrong with the Redskins passing game. <laughs> but the Redskins need as a runner. Bring back John Riggins, eh? But watch this run by Clarence Harmon. A good block by Wilbur Jackson. Simple off tackle play, and Harmon is in, and it has been all Redskins. And the NFL today continues on CBS after these messages from your local stations. Back in New York, and as you know, we are still a week away from the halfway point of the NFL regular season. But for the league's rookies, well, their bodies and their minds have to be telling them this must be postseason play. Because in high school and college, most of them probably played 10 game seasons. And with four preseason games, they've already passed that point on the NFL calendar. And as Irv learned, checking out the rookies' report cards, they won't really know if they receive passing grades for three years. Almost everyone agrees that number 20, Billy Sims of the Lions, has been the top performer of this year's rookie crop. But what about some of the other first-year players? New York Jets wide receiver, Lamb Jones, number 80, has found the early going a bit rough. 
But there have been others like Bills running back Joe Cribbs, number 20, who ranks high in AFC rushing and receiving. The people who are responsible for selecting such athletes are the members of the player personnel departments of all 28 NFL teams. Throughout the year, they compile data, analyze, and evaluate college talent. Herman has played tough competition in the Big Ten, as Camel has also in the Coastal uh, League there. He has been in a pro set type of an offense all his life. I visited the Eagles and their personnel chief, Carl Peterson, to get his views on the class of 1980. Let's talk about some of the rookies who've done well in the league this year. Um, let's start with Earl Cooper. Earl, I think, went to the right team uh, in San Francisco and Bill Walsh. He uh, catches the ball so well out of the backfield, and, and in their offense, they throw so much to their backs. And uh, he's really fit in well in their program, and I know he's been very, very productive, and they're very happy with him at the 49ers. Anthony Muno, so what's your feeling about him as a rookie? Anthony is a player that, that came out of college and stepped right into a starting position with Cincinnati. And the only question that any of us had uh, were his uh, injuries in college. And I think uh, so far uh, that he's sound and uh, he's going to be a great football player. Which teams would you say were the most successful in this year's draft? Well, I, I think uh, for immediate help uh, in the AFC, Buffalo has, has done a fine job. And uh, in the NFC, uh, Atlanta's had a very good draft. Junior Miller, their great tight end out of Nebraska, their first round pick, he's making a, a very, very significant contribution to a very good pass offense. Uh, another player is Buddy Curry, their second round pick out of North Carolina. The Falcons run a, a very linebacker-oriented defense, and uh, he stepped in and really picked up the slack, and I know that Lehman Bennett down there is very, very pleased with him. You evaluate the drafts, actually, though, I think about three years from now. And if those guys are still playing and they're making a valuable contribution to your football team, you can say you had a good draft. But for immediate uh, help for the 1980 season, I think those teams have done very well. Irv, how far can they go with a prospect before they draft them? You know, in the old days, you couldn't bring a guy in and take a look at him prior to the draft. Today, they can bring him in, give him a complete physical, get a chance to know him pretty well prior to the draft, so they know what kind of goods they're getting when they go into the draft. Yeah, eliminating the hit and miss, aren't yes, they, sir. in the draft. All right, now let's send you back to the stadium and the game you're enjoying on CBS.